Now that the new Legend Onslaught mode has been out for a few days, tons of people have been talking about their best loadout options to trivialize the new mode and get you those easy round 50 completions. Well, I'm going to be doing the same thing, but featuring a loadout that's had a few murmurs, but I want to shed even more light on one of the best support exotics in the game. Of course, it's none other than Cenotaph Mask on the Warlock. Let's get straight into it. The armor perk is high priority. Steadily reloads a portion of your equipped Trace Rifles magazine from reserves. Damaging a vehicle, boss, or champion with a Trace Rifle marks them as a target. When an ally defeats the marked target, special ammo is granted for you and heavy ammo for your allies. This is an extremely unique support exotic, letting you tag an enemy, a boss, vehicle, or champion like they said, with a Trace Rifle and it will mark them with a red X. Now when your teammates finish that kill, you'll get special ammo every single time and they'll get heavy ammo every single time, letting you just blitz through these rounds with your heavy ammo while also giving you special ammo to just keep the chain going. It's extremely, extremely strong and potent. Now, we need to touch on a few things because Legend Onslaught mode is extremely difficult. I've completed it, as you can see, I've got the emblem, but it took a few tries, I'm not gonna lie to you. Now, what you're gonna want is a very, very popular team comp of two Warlocks and an Orpheus Rig Hunter. This will let you spam your supers over and over and over again without even having to account for Cenotaph Mask. You guys can honestly just stand in a well the entire time, mark a target, and have your teammates defeat them. It's so, so easy, and it will definitely trivialize a lot of the rounds. Now, the Tormentor is an issue. The Tormentor can spawn in randomly at any time during the run, and there's going to be two Tormentors you have to fight. Now, of course, these are going to pop up when you least expect them, and it's going to be a crazy difficulty spike at the beginning of a round. Now the best tip I can give you is to hit him heavy and hit him hard with precision damage weapons. Something like Leviathan's Breath, Linear Fusion Rifles, Arbalist, things like that. Divinity is also a great option. Mark him with Divinity, put the bubble on him, and your teammates can go to town with their heavy weapons. Another tip I can give you is to play as a team. Three stacking and just running around the map as a unit can definitely keep you all alive and keep you out of bad situations. Next, you're going to want to prioritize your supers. If you get the right comp, the right team comp, it will just let you chain your supers over and over and over again, and you won't have to worry about making a mistake or staying alive. The optimal team comp that I've seen are two Warlocks with Well of Radiance and an Orpheus Rig Hunter. Now, this is not demanded at all. You do not need to do this to finish the encounter, but it will make it a lot easier. So I highly recommend it, and that's why I've made this build for you. Now, let's get into the weapons. You're going to want a strong hand cannon. Unfortunately, we cannot use Sunshot, so I'll be using Fatebringer, of course Divinity, and a strong machine gun. I've got Avalanche here with Incandescent, and it's unbelievable. But if you don't have one, Rockets are also always a great option. I highly recommend Rockets as well for the boss room. Gallahorn and two Rockets kind of blitzes through the boss. You don't even have to do the encounter, so keep that in mind. Moving on to the mods. This is interesting. I'm going to want you to really, really get this down so you can copy this build and do it just like I have it. A heavy ammo scout as well as a finder, kinetic siphon, a firepower on your gloves, impact induction as well as a fastball. On your chest piece, harmonic resistance and sniper damage resistance as well as a harmonic reserves if you're using a solar weapon. If you don't want to use this, you can swap it out and do three different resistances just to give yourself as much damage resistance as you can. Definitely an option. Next, I've got a recuperation on my legs as well as better already. And then one solar weapon surge just to increase that damage on my rocket. I've also got bomber, two bombers on my class item as well as a time dilation. Now, we've got to move on to the mods and the artifact because this is extremely important too. In the artifact, you're going to want to pick up kindling trigger. This means when you're Radiant, your solar weapons will apply Scorch to Unscorched Combatants. This won't apply for us using Divinity, but if you're switching over to Sunshot, this will definitely work for you. Flint Striker, you're gonna want Torch as well. 
Revitalizing Blast, which states causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions and bosses for a short duration. Definitely pick this up. Rays of Precision as well for ignitions on solar precision kills. Overload Rockets and Argent Ordnance. All of these mods in combination will help you during the run, giving you either Charge with Light, Argent Ordnance for Overload Rockets, or just debuffs and explosions synergizing with solar. Now, if you want to synergize with solar, you have another option, and I recommend trying this out. You can swap to Sunshot and any sort of kinetic trace rifle. I'm using Appetence here, and now you've got full solar synergy to synergize with your artifact as well, and your solar weapon surge on your legs. This is also an option, and if you don't want to use Divinity, ladies and gentlemen, I highly recommend trying this out. I'm going to make it easier though, Divinity will work throughout the whole run and help with the Tormentor. So. This is why I'm giving it to you here. And ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The build loop is very, very simple. When you see a big yellow bar target, pull out Divinity, mark them, let your teammates know to blitz them down, and you can grab the ammo and go over and over and over again, spamming heavy and chaining your supers back and forth. I really, really hope this helps, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you some gameplay just to lock it in. Guardian down. Guardian down.
All right, everyone, I really hope you like that gameplay, and I hope this loadout will help you take down the 50 rounds of Legend Onslaught. This mode is extremely difficult, and if you do not come in with the right loadout and the right comp, you're not going to complete it. I'm going to be honest with you. There's so many damage spikes and things that can happen throughout the rounds, different mini games and activities you have to complete, and some you don't, in order to finish the round. Knowing which ones you should and shouldn't do in the right timing is very, very difficult. Adding to the difficulty, there's champions, tormentors, and things like that that just make it even harder. So I want to give you a really comprehensive and just overall build to let you finish the mode and get this emblem. Thank you all very much for checking out this video on Legend Onslaught and what I think is a really, really easy build to beat the mode all 50 waves. I highly recommend, like I said, coming in with a good team comp. Two Warlocks on Well of Radiance, as well as an Orpheus Rig Hunter, is what I recommend. Do that, guys. Throw on this loadout, and I bet you, you will do it. Lock in, and hey, if you need some help, comment down below. I'll be doing runs, and I might add somebody and help you out. Thank you all for checking out this video, and as always, I'll see you around.